Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical and Biblical Israelites. This presentation is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. This video will exhibit biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The topic, subject matter, and question of this video that will be answered clearly were the last king and queen of America people of color. King George III of Great Britain has been described as copper colored and his wife Queen Charlotte has been described as a true mulatto. Eyewitness accounts strongly suggest that the royal couple of Great Britain were both people of color. I will give the sources for this information or revelation in the context on which this is based so that it will make complete rational sense. Also, it will be revealed how this affected the policy of Great Britain concerning the people of color, the mulattoes, and the Negroes in the 13 British colonies, mainly on how they, the mulattoes, and the Negroes, and the enslaved, believed King George was on their side against their slave owners. And they believed King George and Queen Charlotte would rather see them as free British subjects and not enslaved human beings. The idea that the British Empire was a total racist enterprise may be a complete lie, considering that people of color ruled the empire. It's inception. Viewing this knowledge from the perspective of the world stage, this may change the way we have evaluated history for the past few centuries. And this more accurate history may cause us to understand the goals and mindset of the world elites and their vision of the future and their methods of managing the world. The Blacks in America have suddenly developed an interest in being reunited with their family on the continent of Africa. These interests have fueled a fury of research in the field of genetics and thus far have yielded some of the research that was done by African ancestry, Washington, D.C. And it was astounding. The results showed that 30% of all African Americans' DNA was traced back to Europe. A historical, physical, 
appropriate description of King George III of Great Britain from an eyewitness that knew the king well, described King George as copper-colored. In the royal physician who lived with this royal couple of the Hanover dynasty, when describing this Queen Charlotte, Queen of Great Britain, and a princess of Germany, describing her facial features, he used this term. She has a true mulatto face. Royal Houses, a historical timeline of British monarchs. From the House of Stuart, top left to the present day house of Windsor bottom right in this more historically accurate depiction of members of the royal houses of the British monarchs we will highlight one particular family In this royal house or royal dynasty, a family of rulers from to the far right, King George III, King George IV, William IV, and Queen Victoria, all members of the House of Hanover. This video will spotlight King George III and his wife, Charlotte. In this painting of King George III, who has been described by people who knew him well as copper colored, which is the complexion of Native American Indian or a light-skinned Black American, King George III. George III, George III, George William Frederick, born the 4th of June, 1738, died the 29th of January, 1820 was King of Great Britain and Ireland from the 25th of October, 1760, until his death in 1820. The Acts of Union, 1800, unified Great Britain and Ireland into the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, with George as its king. He was concurrently Duke and Prince Elector of Hanover in the Holy Roman Empire before becoming King of Hanover on the 12th of October 1814. He was a monarch of the House of Hanover who, unlike his two predecessors, was born in Great Britain, spoke English as his first language, and never visited Hanover in Germany. George was born during the reign of his paternal grandfather, King George II, as the first son of Frederick, Prince of Wales, and Princess Augusta of Saxe-Gotha. Following his father's death in 1751, Prince George became heir apparent and Prince of Wales. 
he succeeded to the throne on George II's death in 1760. The following year, he married Princess Charlotte of mecklenburg strutzen with whom he had 15 children. George III's life and reign were marked by a series of military conflicts involving his kingdoms, much of the rest of Europe, and places farther afield in Africa, the Americas, and Asia. Early in his reign, Great Britain defeated France in the Seven Years' War, becoming the dominant European power in North America and India. However, many of Britain's American colonies were soon lost in the American War of Independence. Further wars against revolutionary and Napoleonic France from 1793 concluded in the defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815 and in 1807, the transatlantic slave trade was banned from the British Empire. Some really significant events happened during the reign of George III when Britain defeated France during the Battle of Waterloo. The Rothschilds became a preeminent power or factor in the banking industry. The British Empire conquered and controlled India in an American War of Independence. The British King George lost the 13 colonies and the United States of America was born. And in 1807, the transatlantic slave trade was banned from the British Empire under George III, a man of color. In 1807, the transatlantic slave trade was banned from the British Empire in the reign of George III, a person of color. And this history brings us to the British loyalists in the emancipation of black Americans under the rulership and reign of King George III. For the black loyalists or black American soldiers fought on the side of Great Britain to achieve emancipation, freedom, and citizenship in the British Empire. Fighting for emancipation and the war for independence. This book is by Alan Gilbert. Black Patriots and Loyalists. Black Patriots are Black Americans who fought in the war of independence on the side of the Americans for freedom and citizenship within the American society. And loyalists are black Americans who fought on the side of the British for citizenship and freedom. The American Revolution may have been a political revolution, not a social one, but both ideas of the revolution and the concrete military necessities occasioned by it had immediate and lasting social ramifications. 
Not least of these was the relationship between the struggle for independence from Britain and the struggle to end chattel slavery in the 13 American colonies and the British Empire as a whole. In the American War of Independence, there was a war to end the rulership of the British Empire over the 13 colonies. Also, there was a war for Black Americans who fought on both sides to gain that emancipation from both the American 13 colonies and the British Empire in emancipation for the descendants of the Atlantic slave trade within the British Empire worldwide. And this includes all victims of the transatlantic slave trade, Native Americans and Latinos. Many of the earliest Black Americans that was involved in the transatlantic slave trade had origins that were Latino. I went back to Spain and Portugal. During the American Revolution, the worldwide movement for greater democracy thus in fact occurred as two revolutions. One undertaken to achieve political independence and the other to achieve social equality. And as the American rebellion developed, while the two revolutions sometimes ran together in parallel, they more often were at odds. Those who fought for independence sometimes did so to oppose emancipation. Conversely, and what may at first seem like a paradox, some of those who fought to crush the incipient rebellion for American freedom did so to further their own freedom from slavery. Embracing British offers of emancipation in return for their service in the imperial cause. The British Empire fought against democracy and social equality. This is a historical fact. The monarchies do not support democratic republics. The monarchies rule by divine right of kings, meaning the rulership is by right of God, not popular opinion or popular vote. It is rulership by kings or queens who obtain their rights directly from God, not the people. People who believe in monarchy believe to go against the king is to go against the authority of God himself. So black patriots fought for democracy or rule by the people and black loyalists fought for Britain for rulership by the king who was under the rulership and authority of God. In modern times, people who are considered monarchist are used labeled fascist. This war continues to this very day. Democracy against monarchy. When many people use this term, Christ is king. Do they not understand that they support a monarchy 
or monarchist form of government and reject democracy and a populist form of government? Black loyalist. To the left is an image. Liberty to slaves. This is a smock similar to those worn by black loyalist soldiers and Lord Dunmore's Ethiopian regiment. These were British soldiers or black Americans who were British soldiers. Freed black slaves fought on both sides in the American Revolution for their freedom. But only belatedly did that emancipation become part of the policy of the American independence movement. It was thus the British, not the American patriots, who most advanced the cause of the revolution for social equality, even while opposing the revolution for political independence. What follows is the story of the role played by black freedom fighters in these two revolutions. Belatingly means emancipation for black Americans and Native Americans and Latino Americans within the American 13 colonies should have been on the table from the start. In the British Empire, there was not social equality. It's a hierarchy. Everyone is subject to the king or the queen. And so the Black Americans fought to become subjects of the British king. The right to be treated equally as a subject and citizen within the British Empire. Another piece of history that is not well known is this war is the birth of the American elite, such classes as the Boulets. When these soldiers made treaties with both the British and the Americans, they made alliances to be part of the military order of the British Empire and the American Empire in exchange for freedom. This applied to a small number of Black Americans, but these small numbers became the origin of the upper class of the Black Americans. Their ancestors won their freedom and emancipation during the American War of Independence, when they fought for the British and the Americans, they became what is known as the free people of color. This doesn't just apply for North America. The free people of color were the children of people that fought in wars. They fought for the Spanish, they fought for the Portuguese, they fought for the Dutch, they fought for different imperial governments. They gave their services in exchange for citizenship, privilege, the right to own property, and other such prizes. They became the elite classes throughout North, Central, and South America, including the Caribbean. They are the elite amongst the people of color, be it Black or Latinos. John Singleton Copley's painting, The Death of Major Pearson shows a black soldier, 
avenging the death of Pearson during the Battle of Jersey in England, a run-up to the American Revolutionary War. The Battle of Jersey took place on the island of Jersey, a small island off the coast of France. It was between the British and the French. The British King George III against the French and Louis XVI, the last King of France. Black loyalists were African Americans who sided with the loyalists or British during the American Revolutionary War. In particular, the term refers to men who escaped enslavement by Patriot masters or American masters and served on the loyalist or British side because of the crowns or the British crowns guarantee of freedom. Some 3,000 black loyalists were evacuated from New York to Nova Scotia, Canada. They were individually listed in the Book of Negroes, a book documenting the names of each of these black loyalists. As the British gave them certificates of freedom and arranged for their transportation. The British Crown gave them land grants and supplies to help them resettle in Nova Scotia, Canada. Some of the European loyalists who immigrated to Nova Scotia, Canada brought their enslaved servants with them, making for an uneasy society. One historian has argued that those slaves should not be regarded as loyalists, as they had no choice in their fates. Other black loyalists were evacuated to London or the Caribbean colonies. Within a month, about 800 slaves or former slaves had fled to Norfolk, Virginia to enlist in the British service. Outraged Virginian slave owners decreed that runaway slaves would be executed and they also counteracted the promises of Lord Dunmore by claiming that slaves who escaped to Lord Dunmore will be sold to sugar plantations in the Caribbean. But many slaves were willing to risk their lives for a chance at freedom. Lord Dunmore's proclamation was the first mass emancipation of slaves in America. The 1776 Declaration of Independence refers obliquely to the proclamation by citing it as one of the grievances that King George III had excited domestic insurrections among us. An earlier version of the declaration was more explicit, stating the following of King George III, but these controversial details were dropped during the final development of the document in Congress. So the Americans were angry that King George III caused the black Americans who were enslaved and Native Americans and Latinos in the Americas to seek emancipation and freedom serving with the British. He, King George III, 
is now exciting those very people to rise in arms among us and to purchase that liberty of which he has deprived them by murdering the people of whom he has obstructed them. Thus, paying off former crimes committed against the liberties of one people with crimes which he urges them to commit against the lives of another. Draft Declaration of Independence, 1776. Jamaica's governor, John Dolling, drafted a proposal in 1779 for the enlistment of a regiment of mulattoes and another regiment of free Negroes. And the reason there's a separation between mulattoes and free Negroes is that most free mulattoes were of European origin, people of color from Europe, and in some cases, free Negroes also, because of the history of the Moors. Not only the history of the Moors, but of the Black Romans, of the Black Greeks, of the Black Germans, of the Black Celts, and other people of European origin who lived in Europe since the days of the Roman Empire and before. In the times of King George III, slavery did not legally exist in England. Lower courts often interpreted the ruling as determining that the status of slavery did not exist in England and Wales, but Mansfield ruled more narrowly. The decision did not apply to the North American and Caribbean colonies, where local legislatures had passed laws to institutionalize slavery, which didn't have legal authority in England or Wales. A number of cases were presented to the English courts for the emancipation of slaves residing in England and numerous American runaways hoped to reach England where they expected to gain freedom. American slaves began to believe that King George III was for them and against their masters as tensions increased before the American Revolution. Colonial slaveholders feared a British inspired slave rebellion. And Lord Dunmore wrote to Lord Dartmouth in early 1775 on his intention to take advantage of the situation. Black Americans believed King George III was for them and against their slave masters. Agreements between the British and Americans. Military service in exchange for citizenship helped create the class of people known in the Americas as free people of color. Phillipsburg Proclamation. With the arrival of 30,000 Hessian mercenary troops, the British did not have as much need of former slaves. So William Howe banned the formation of new black regiments and disbanded his own. But freeing slaves of rebels, American rebels, still held value as economic warfare against the American 
so-called patriots. In 1779, Sir Henry Clinton issued the Phillipsburg Proclamation, expanding Dunmore's proclamation and promising freedom to any escaped slave of a American patriot. However, Clinton often ordered the return escaped slaves to loyalists or British masters. Though he requested the owner to refrain from punishment of the slave. In 1778, the Patriots promised, or the Americans promised freedom to escape slaves of loyalists or British. But as Boston King noted in his memoir, both Patriots, Americans, and loyalist British who captured escaped slaves often sold them back into slavery. Black Americans fought for the British and Americans in the War of Independence, 1776. The 30,000 Hessian mercenary troops came from Germany. Because of this, and other economic ventures. This made the landgrave of Hesse Castle, where the Hessian mercenary troops came from, the richest man in Europe. In the famous international banking family, the Rothschilds, were the bankers for the landgrave of Hesse Castle. The Black Americans and Native Americans and Latinos Americans who fought for the British and the Americans in the War of Independence, this became the nucleus, or these families became the nucleus of the families that became the Black establishment in the Americas or the Boule families. King George III, mad villainous boo a flawed, misunderstood man. A new publicly available archive aims to give scholars and dabblers alike a chance to decide for themselves. This image was rendered in 1795, more than a decade after George nearly abdicated. And King George has been described by people who personally knew him as copper colored. Both King George III and his wife Charlotte were both people of color. King George has been described as copper colored and Queen Charlotte has been described as having a true mulatto face. King George was from the Hanover dynasty, Germans, and his queen Charlotte was from a noble German family. These are both people of German origin who were people of color. Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz born Sophia Charlotte, May 19, 1744, died November 17, 1818, was Queen of Great Britain and Ireland as the wife of King George III from their marriage on September 8, 1761, and to her death in 1818. The Acts of Union 1800 
unified Great Britain and Ireland and to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. As George's wife, she was also Electress of Hanover in Germany and to becoming Queen of Hanover in Germany on October 12, 1814. Charlotte was Britain's longest serving queen consort, serving for 57 years and 70 days. Charlotte was born into the ruling family of Mecklenburg Stretzel, a duchy in northern Germany. In 1760, the young and unmarried George III inherited the British throne. As Charlotte was a minor German princess with no interest in politics, George considered her a suitable consort and they married in 1761. The marriage lasted 57 years and produced 15 children. 13 of whom survived to adulthood. They included two future British monarchs, George IV and William IV, as well as Charlotte, Princess Royal, who became Queen of Württemberg, and Prince Ernest Augustus, who became King of Hanover and Germany. Charlotte was a patron of the arts and an amateur botanist who helped expand Kew Gardens. She introduced the Christmas tree to Britain from Germany, decorating one for a Christmas party for children of one sort in 1800. She was distressed by her husband's bouts of physical and mental illness, which became permanent in later life. She maintained a close relationship with Queen Marie Antoinette of France, and the French Revolution is likely to have enhanced the emotional strain held by Charlotte. Marie Antoinette, Queen of France, was also a person of color, as well as her husband, Louis XVI of France. The French Revolution, as other revolutions in Europe, was a strategy to get rid of these royal German kings who were of Judeo-Syrian origin since the days of Constantine. Untold stories of history's past. Queen Charlotte and the British royal bloodline. A week ago, Prince Harry and his wife, Duchess Meghan Markle, gave an interview to Oprah that brought to light the underlying racism of the British monarchy. Perhaps. It personally was not a surprise to me as racism was akin to the development of the British Empire. Maybe not. You can say no, it was all about greed and power. Yes, but at the end of the day, racism helped the British colonize the world. That is true. Don't argue with me. Most know little of the lineage of the royal family since during the First World War. The family decided to cut ties with their ancestral German roots simply by changing their last name from Sachs, Coburg, and Gotha to Windsor. However, those very German roots created the foundation for the modern monarchy we know today and other famous royals around Europe. What? a dash of more. And who were the Moors? This is true. All royal houses have a dash 
of Moorish blood. And who are the Moors? The Moors were Israelites or Jews from Syria, North Africa, and other parts of the Near East. They were Israelites who were called Moors, which is synonymous with people of color or blacks or dark complexioned people. These Israelites were the so-called Black Greeks, Black Romans, and Black Germans. Who were the Moors according to this article? The Moors were North African Muslims. This is not true. They were North African Jews who converted to Islam. Who were a part of the Muri Berber tribes? There were Berber tribes of Jewish or of Judaic origin in North Africa. They inhabited the land of Mauritania. True. Modern day Morocco and Algeria. Correct. During the Middle Ages, the Moors conquered many places in Europe, leaving their influence for years to come. But the Israelite royal families were not Islamic Moors. They existed within Europe or in Germany, France, Rome, part of the Roman Empire before the existence of the Moorish Islamic Empire. They pre-existed the Moorish Islamic Empire. These German and Roman families were nevertheless labeled Moors or so-called black men and women. On the right side of the page, we can see an image from the book Sex and Race, Volume 1, Race Mixing in the British Isles. On the top is an image of a man and a woman, a knight and his wife. This man is a Norman knight, a German, with his coat of arms washed away. Both the knight, the Norman knight, the German Norman knight, and his lady are both people of color. In the coats of arms, to the bottom left, the Zagarari family. A famous Italian noble family. And to the left, the Evesham family. A famous Anglo-Saxon family. Both families with more heads and their coats of arms. Depicting their origins being of Moorish or so-called black blood. Or Judeo-Syrian, known as Biblically Israelite origin or ancestry. Way before Meghan Markle came into the royal family, the royal bloodline was already introduced to African DNA, so-called African DNA. The bloodline was introduced by Queen Charlotte, who was somewhat of mixed race, a small percent of African as there was many generations in between carrying the Moorish DNA of her Portuguese ancestors. Before Queen Charlotte, the royal families of England and other parts of Europe were of dark complexion, Israelite DNA or blood. But the Portuguese royal families were also of this dark complexioned Israelite royal blood. Queen Charlotte was born Sophia Charlotte in 1744 in a small North German duchy in the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire were ruled by these Israelite royal families. Named the Duchy of 
Mecklenburg Stritzel. What is a duchy? A duchy is considered a small medieval town, something like a fiefdom, ruled over by a duke or duchess. And in this case, what happened to be Charlotte's mother and father. Her upbringing was that of a girl growing up in the country, receiving a mediocre education, focusing on household management and religion, not that of a British royal. Charlotte was directly descended from Margarita de Castro Sousa. Sousa is Hebrew for lily, the lily plant, a black branch of the Portuguese royal house. This is acknowledged that the Portuguese royal house was black. Her ancestry also traced back to Martin Alfonso de Sousa, Chicairo, the illegitimate son of King Alfonso of Portugal and his Moorish mistress, Rana Madra Ghana. Most of her African Islamic ancestry was from Martin Alfonso de Sousa, wife, Ines de Valadares. This information is true to a certain extent. But all of these aristocratic noble people were people of color, from dark complexions to light complexions. Her namesake, Charlotte, is carried on in various places around the world. Here is a list of some places that were named after Queen Charlotte. The Queen Charlotte Islands in British Columbia, Canada. The Queen Charlotte Channel in Vancouver, Canada. Queen Charlotte Sound in New Zealand. Charlottesville, Virginia. Charlotte, North Carolina. Port Charlotte, Florida. Queen Charlotte's in Chelsea Hospital in London, England. Queen Charlotte's Ball. An annual English debutante event. Rutgers University in New Jersey was chartered in 1766 as Queen's College in reference to Queen Charlotte. The old Queen's building at Rutgers retains the Queen's name. And the article continues. Along with tracing Queen Charlotte's DNA to the Black Portuguese royal line, there are other examples that help support the Queen's mixed race. During the War of 1812, while the Queen was still on the throne, Sir Alexander Cochrane, a Vice Admiral of the British Navy, campaigned to enlist enslaved American Blacks to join the British side of the war by stating the Queen of England is a Negro woman, causing the largest emancipation before the end of the Civil War. More than 4,000 enslaved blacks joined the British side of the war, leaving behind their American masters. The black loyalists were told by the British. The Queen of England is a Negro woman, Queen Charlotte. An image of Queen Charlotte can be found on the cover of the book, Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. On the right, it's the same image produced in color, showing that the king of Great Britain was a man of color and his wife, Queen Charlotte, was also a person of color. His most sacred majesty, George III, king of Great Britain, a man of color, of Israelite, ancestry.
Memoirs of George III, late king of Great Britain, by the author John Brown, Liverpool, 1820. In the center image is the author John Brown. To the right is an image of King George III, a dark complexion man. On page 731, personal description of the late king, King George. Personal description of the late king, King George III, was in height about five feet, 10 inches and a half, and of a robust person in his youth he was considered handsome, being of a flare and blooming complexion. But his face and eyes were too prominent. His hair was light, waxen. His eyes were gray. His eyebrows white. His lips thick. His teeth white and regular. His mouth large and wide. Laterly, his face was red and often of a deep copper color. His countenance, when grave, had an air of deep melancholy, but when cheerful, it indicated a degree of felibility approaching to weakness. His lips thick, his mouth large and wide, of a deep copper color. Copper color complexion in those days was a complexion that they used to describe Native Americans, as in this book, A Complete Course of Geography by William Swinton, 1875, page 17. The Indians are the representative of the Native races of America. They have a copper-colored complexion, rather regular features, straight black hair and scanty beard, copper color complexion, like King George III, a man of color. Copper color is also used to describe light-skinned Black Americans from the book Slavery, Not Forgiven, Never Forgotten. Slaves ran away and they were labeled on runaway signs descriptively. $500 reward, runaway on Saturday night, September 5th, Bill Cole, age about 37 years, of copper complexion. Another man also was also Hanson, a runaway slave. Copper complexion. So copper complexion was used to describe King George III, Native Americans, and runaway Black American slaves. Copper complexion. King George III and his wife, Queen Charlotte, were both people of color. I will be using more resource material to show how the king, the queen, and the whole entire Hanover family were described as people of color using terms of that time period. Now here's a chart of the modern day House of Windsor, starting with Queen Elizabeth II. 
going down to Prince Charles and uh, their children, Prince William and Marie. And Princess William children. Prince William, who is second in line to the throne of Great Britain, England, he named his son George. After George the Third and his daughter Charlotte, after Queen Charlotte. Remarkable. 